The octopus has long inspired fear and loathing. A slimy creature hurtling up from the bottom of the sea to attack ships and drag unlucky sailors to their deaths in the dark sea. But is there any truth to the myth? Oyster A Aquarium in La Coruña in northwestern Spain. Antonio Cribero is the aquarium's head biologist. He's been studying the behavior and intelligence of the octopus for the last 10 years. But what most people don't know is that while we've been studying the octopus, the octopus has been studying us. This dimension of octopus behavior doesn't really surprise Antonio. In fact, those who work with octopuses in aquariums have their work cut out for them, just keeping them in their tanks. Turn your back and an octopus can crawl out of one tank and slip into another to get its prey and then quietly return home. So just who is this curious creature who leaves the comfort of its watery world and seems as interested in us as we are in it. Antonio knows this isn't an animal who simply made a break for freedom. This is an intelligent creature who's mapping its environment but just how intelligent is the octopus? Antonio is going to make little Pepino undergo a slew of tests. This time, there will be no escape. Most animals learn the skills they need from their parents to find food and to hide from their enemies. Much of the rest is instinctual. The sign of true intelligence is when an animal solves a new kind of problem, something that no member of the species may have figured out before. For the octopus, removing a cork from a bottle to catch a crab is child's play. It's almost exactly like lifting a rock to find a delicious morsel underneath. It does it by instinct. But what about opening a screw-top jar? There are no screw-top jars in nature, nor any instinctual response to help in opening it. Look, he's exploring the jar. He's touching it. The little octopus's inquisitive arms are almost as sensitive and agile as human hands as they explore the novelty of the screw-top jar. Here it seems the octopus is not using instinct, but cognitive reasoning to solve this problem, thinking if the crab got in there, there must be a way to get it out. Pepino thinks through the problem until he succeeds. The hardest part is to believe that this animal is simply a mollusk. As far as his family tree goes, this young octopus is more closely related to an oyster or a snail than to any other species of animal. As a reward for all his hard work, Pepino injects poison to paralyze the crab, and then it's lunchtime. I've been fishing for octopus in the Atlantic off the northern coast of Spain for 20 years. And I think that the octopus is a very intelligent animal. I've seen some strange things in my 20 years on the job. 
One time, I sent three basket traps. I put two sardines in each one as bait and dropped them into the water. Later, when I hauled in the traps, I was amazed to find one trap containing an octopus and six sardines. The thing took two sardines out of one trap, tucked them under an arm, then took two from the second trap, tucked them under, and swam over to the third trap where it climbed in and settled down for a feast. When we catch an octopus in a trap, it's either because it fell asleep or because it's confused. I mean, an octopus can go in and out of a trap no problem. It's smart enough to get the sardines out and then take them home whenever it wants. Lobster traps may fool lobsters, but they're just food storage for an octopus. Where's the trap when you can get in, have lunch, and leave without paying the check? Back at the aquarium, Antonio Cribero and his team make their crab-eating experiment even harder. We'll put some crabs inside the flask. We'll force them in. But because of their size, it will be impossible for them to come out through the opening. The octopus can reach them, but won't be able to get them out. Even chimpanzees were unable to solve this problem. We now want to see how the octopus will deal with the problem. These crabs were forced into the flask, a situation that simply wouldn't happen in the octopus's natural habitat. The octopus has to think. He smells his prey and can see that there's no stopper keeping him away from the crab. But even with an open top, these crabs are definitely not going to come out. This means the problem has to be attacked from another angle. If the crabs are too big to get out, the octopus will just have to make himself small enough to get in. Although he's closed up inside, Pepino doesn't seem agitated. Having solved the problem of getting into the flask, he knows he won't have any trouble getting out. The octopus has passed an important intelligence test, the solving of new problems with flying colors. In all of these tests, we've used our star octopus, Pepino. But we then repeated the experiment with other octopuses so we could prove that we were not merely observing one highly skilled. This clearly indicates that we're not dealing with the individual skill of a single specimen, but with a skill inherent to the species, to octopus vulgaris. Kevin van Klemput has studied this area for three decades now. The giants hold few secrets for him. So, so where are we going? We're here at Wayne Rock. Right now the anchor is sitting in about 15 meters of water in what I call a valley of three rocks. And so we'll be going down to the anchor and working our way upslope onto the top of the reef just off the starboard side of the boat here. And that's where we'll uh, work with the octopuses up on top of that. Today, if we get down in the 20 to 30 meter range, we may be able to find some females with eggs in their dens. So maybe we'll get down and see some of them.
As soon as they enter the water, the divers are spotted by strange ghost-like creatures. The men have no idea they're being watched. Screened by curtains of water, the unseen octopuses keep their eyes on the intruders. The huge animal slowly comes closer and decides to risk a meeting. Truly, a close encounter of the third kind. Rectangular pupils and round golden eyes give the octopus a strangely familiar expression. Could it be a look of recognition, almost understanding? Sensing that he has nothing to fear from the man, the octopus lets him stroke his soft, silky skin. This creature is as unthreatening as it's awe-inspiring. It's odd. Despite its amazing size, its Herculean strength, and its complex brain, the octopus has never become king of the sea. Many think this has to do with the tragically short life expectancy of the female. We follow a female octopus as Kevin moves with her towards her grotto. There we learn of the curse that hangs over her entire species. When a female octopus reaches the age of about three and a half years old, and after only one mating, she chooses a hollow under a ledge to lay her eggs. Concealed in this hideaway for six months while her eggs incubate, this self-sacrificing mother spends all her time protecting and oxygenating her eggs, which hang in clusters from the underside of the ledge. She will not feed herself during the entire six months. By the time the eggs start to hatch, she is exhausted, anemic, and starving. Her sacrifice may preserve the species, but at the same time, it has prevented it from passing on skill and knowledge from one generation to the next. Each and every generation of octopus has to start learning about its world from scratch. Every generation is born into an eternal new beginning. The mother's last effort is to leave the grotto for her own. Perhaps nowhere more so than here in Monaco at one of the great centers of oceanographic studies. Thousands of mysteries have been solved and many discoveries have been made within these walls. Didier Terron, head biologist of the museum, explains this new interest in the unique intelligence of the octopus. We found a small marine reptile that existed 150 million years ago that preyed on the octopus. That's when the octopus began to evolve toward its present form. It started to lose its external shell and began to colonize a variety of environments like the deep ocean or coastal regions where it evolved much more speed and agility. 
The oldest cephalopod fossils ever found are 507 million years old. We know that there was a split into two branches. On one side, we have the present underwater marine vertebrates and higher vertebrates, including humans. And on the other side, we have the cephalopod of today. These two branches separated between 500 and 600 million years ago. Since that time, the octopus has developed its own independent form of intelligence. Primates, dolphins, all the known forms of higher intelligence on Earth are the product of a single evolutionary line. However, over the last 500 million years, the octopus has created a line parallel to ours and developed its own intelligence. While the mammals formed groups and developed communication abilities, the octopus chose solitude and developed an almost supernatural power, invisibility. The octopus has the uncanny ability to blend into the background almost completely. The octopus can change its skin's color, its markings, and its texture at will and quickly. It's a thought-out action the result of the animal's observation of its environment and a hair-trigger interpretation of it. To penetrate the mystery of the octopus's thinking skin, Antonio has chalked up hundreds of hours of observation. We call this tank the marine paradise, and at least for the octopuses, it is. The tank is full of rocks that the octopuses can use as hideouts, and they can behave as they would in their natural habitat. Finally, and this is the best part for the octopus, there are no predators. The little octopuses are somewhere around, but where? They must be caught by surprise, otherwise they'll disappear in a flash. As it flees, shooting ahead like a rocket, the octopus releases bursts of ink. These clouds are composed of melanin and other secretions, and they're meant to imitate the octopus's silhouette. Most enemies are fooled by these decoy shapes, except that now it's another intelligent being that's keeping up the chase. We also discover that it's a very emotional animal, and it can turn pale with fright, redden with anger, or alternate between the two colors. It can also transform its texture and shape according to its needs. The octopus can even take on the granular texture of the ocean floor, becoming, for all intents and purposes, a mineral. Seen from Antonio's glassed-in office, the static camouflage of a soul is nothing compared to the octopus's dynamic camouflage. Antonio decides to try a more radical experiment to see to what extent the octopus's thinking skin will adapt to its surroundings.
The idea is to allow potential predators to surround the transparent box, pushing the octopus's camouflage powers to the maximum. It will show that in imitating their surroundings, the octopuses must be aware of both themselves and what is around them. Startled, the octopuses hesitate and at first adopt defensive positions. But then almost instantly, they take on the colors and patterns of what's below them. Minutes pass, and wherever they move in the box, the octopus's skin keeps them undetectable to the predators hovering around. Now the experiment becomes even more challenging. Antonio asks his divers to install a piece of canvas printed with a geometric pattern on the bottom of the box. The colors correspond to the pigmentation possibilities of the octopus's melanin. But there's no way that the animal could have seen this artificial design in nature. Proving again that these color changes are the result of actual visual observation. They react very quickly and adapt to the new situation. Another canvas sheet printed with an irregular motif is unfolded. Antonio thinks that the octopus's chromatophore or color cells have now reached their limit. Thousands of cells are mobilized. Apparently, the extraordinary kaleidoscopic nature of the octopus's skin can think its way out of any tight situation. We've seen that camouflaging is a conscious, voluntary act triggered by the octopus's thinking process. But other species of octopus go even further. They not only change their color and texture to confuse predators, they can even mimic the shape and behavior of other animals. Biologists Kevin Van Klemput, Douglas Swanston, and Neil McDaniel are about to stage a unique experiment. They hope to prove that octopuses can create a realistic representation of themselves in their minds, to show that they possess an accurate concept of their capabilities and their anatomies. To do this, they place a giant octopus inside a box, the only way to get out of it is through a hole that's six centimeters in diameter, a dimension that was chosen for a reason. It's the exact size of the only part of the octopus's body that cannot be compressed, the rigid cartilage between its eyes. Where its eyes can pass, the rest of the body can follow. The animal, captured just a few hours before the experiment, has had no experience with divers and finds itself facing a tough problem indeed. In spite of the unfamiliar situation, the red giant quickly finds the right opening and uses an arm to accurately measure it. Then it smoothly slides one arm after another through the hole. Nothing in its behavior has indicated any fear. Leaving its head until the last, compressing and reshaping it, the Houdini of the animal kingdom has broken out of its prison. Divers surface, impressed at the great creature's ingenuity. The whole, it took a long time. It took probably five minutes for it to get out. Very, very slow, very methodical, one arm. Immediately, the experiment is run again, but this time with a four centimeter hole. 
smaller than the distance between the octopus's eyes. It won't be able to get through such a tiny space. The animal seems to be thinking it over, noting the change and judging the space available with an arm. It gives up and doesn't budge. The experiment is repeated dozens of times with different octopuses and always with the same result. As soon as the opening is smaller than the cartilage between the octopus's eyes, it will not even try to get out. They know exactly how big they are. After the experiment ends, the biologists bring their eight-armed guinea pig to the shore before releasing it into the water. Before we release it. Now, if it is a he, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. If you want to read it and record it there, Neil. 252 pounds, 23 kilos. Big boy. So what we're looking for when we do this is we want to find that the animal's third right arm. So here's his eyeballs here. This is down over his forehead. We go to his third right arm. So there's one. There's two. And he's trying to head for the ocean already on us. Here comes the third right arm, and on the end of it is the hectocodilus, the modified tip with no suckers on it for passing the spermatophore or the uh, sperm packet into the female. Well, here he goes. Heading for the ocean. Oh, that. Our octopus, one of the giants of the sea, takes a last look at the world above the water and slides back into its liquid kingdom. Right, happy now. Go back and visit his girlfriend. The next major challenge is to see if octopuses are capable of abstract reasoning. Do their notions of time and space allow them to imagine the future? In La Coruña, Antonio Cribero is carrying out a maze experiment. He has a box with two exits, one a very small hole. The other exit, a larger hole, leads into a long tube that ends in the form of a W. Like its Vancouver Island cousins, the octopus analyzes the hole, too small to get through. There's only one other option. The octopus can't see what's at the end of the tube. To take this path means the animal has to imagine and commit to an unknown reality. Danger is lurking even if the octopus may feel some protection from the plexiglass tube. A big grouper, the octopus's most feared predator, is right there watching. The immediate danger passed, it continues its escape. It knows the tube is the only way to get out of the box, but it doesn't know exactly where the path is leading. The octopus uses the ends of its arms as if they were its fingers or its nose and explores each new turn. When a predator is near, the octopus goes still, hoping not to attract its attention.
it then continues its cautious progress. Finally, its arms are free. A last look around and it rushes behind a rock. Mission accomplished. But Antonio is even more interested in what comes next. If the octopus is put back at the beginning of the same maze, will it show that it is capable of learning and remembering? This time, it doesn't bother to test the size of the small hole. It remembers that it wasn't big enough. With no hesitation, it makes for the opening to the tube and goes through it in a few seconds. The octopus's memory is excellent. It knew what it would find at the end of the maze. rides his scooter every morning to the same little fishing port. Every day, his friends keep a little live octopus from their catch for him. out at the Dorn Institute. That's to make sure that the octopus's reactions aren't the result of any learned behavior. Around since the end of the 19th century, the Institute is the first research center in the world to become interested in measuring the intelligence of the octopus. And this is where some of the most advanced research in this area has been carried out. In order to develop medical robots, Researchers here are exploring the biomechanical properties and the maneuverability of the arms, each of which possesses a sort of brain. Dr. David Edelman of the Neurosciences Institute in California is primarily interested in the reasoning powers of the octopus. The reason I'm here is that as a neuroscientist and as an individual who's always been interested in science in general, the octopus and the cephalopods in general represent to me a great mystery and a great opportunity. When I look at an octopus, what I see is a totally alien organism, an organism that appears entirely different in its external manifestation than any of the vertebrates that I'm very familiar with. And then when you look at the organization of the nervous system that essentially uh, lies behind this, this animal's exterior, this is dramatically different. Nine brains, or more precisely, a central hub of 180 million neurons in the head linked to eight other neuron groupings at the base of each arm. This brain configuration has nothing in common with anything we know, yet it harbors an intelligence nearly identical to our own. We may be scared by the structural differences that we found in octopuses' brains, but the function across those circuits, the traffic patterns that run across those circuits, I would suspect, but I don't know yet, and this is something that we're going to test, is uh, these, are, these are circuits that, have, that carry functional uh, information in a way that is functionally similar across all kinds of animals, including certain vertebrates like birds, like mammals, and invertebrates like the octopus. And I suspect we're gonna find a grand motif, a grand theme in all of this when we're done. among themselves. The thousands upon thousands of tourists who've taken to Capri's waters have had an impact on the octopus, especially on their food supply. Fish have become rare. The Anton Dorn researchers have observed that the octopuses here, probably affected by the difficulties of their habitat, have become less fearful and don't try to escape from divers.
But they notice something much more surprising. The octopuses no longer live separately from each other. And they've become more dominant in their environment. In these waters, the prey has become the predator. Above all, even without language, without the possibility of easily communicating knowledge, they have begun to interact to observe each other, watching each other's reactions. In the waters off Capri, it seems that the young octopuses are learning by studying the older ones. Could this be a leap in the evolution of the species, an end? Back in Naples, Professor Graziano Fiorito, a pioneer in the study of the behavioral biology, how to learn. We got an idea for an experiment when we were watching a Cousteau film. Cousteau showed an octopus opening a sealed glass container to get to his food. In his case, the food was a lobster, whereas we use crabs. We wondered what would happen if we placed two octopuses face to face, one who knows how to open the container and the other who doesn't. We wanted to know if one octopus could learn by observing the other. We created a box with three openings. The difference between the three openings is how they open. With the first opening, the cover simply lifts off. With the second opening, you have to twist open the cover. You have to twist it first and then pull it off. And the last cover also pulls off, but it doesn't come off completely. We place a crab in the box, and then we wait to see what happens. In the lab, the tanks are divided into two by a glass wall. A box with a crab in it is placed in one. Also in that tank is Candide, an octopus that was caught by a fisherman just that morning. Candide sees the crab, but doesn't react. This is exactly what the researchers expected. The experiment can proceed. In the other side of the tank, the same kind of box is given to an octopus that has spent a few days in the lab and has learned how to get into the multiple opening box. This octopus is called the trainee it immediately starts to open the box to get at the prey. Candide watches the trainee. His curiosity is aroused. The trainee isn't wasting its time. Candide is visibly excited and is clearly trying to understand what the octopus is doing. Finally, the trainee octopus opens the box and seizes the crab. Has Candide really learned by observing the trainee? Will he prove the Capri theory right? It's a crucial moment for Graziano and David. They won't have to wait long. Now the glass panel between the two tanks is covered over preventing the octopuses from seeing each other. Candide is left alone with the problem. Is he going to succeed? Without hesitating, Candide grapples with the box. 
and manages to get it open in barely a few seconds. He's observed and he's understood. The experiment is repeated dozens of times and the box is placed in different positions. The octopus always opens it on the same side using the same opening, showing that he didn't simply learn to imitate a movement, he really understood what had to be done. It seems that the octopus is about to take a leap ahead in the evolutionary scheme. There may be no holding back its formidable intelligence. Is this the start of a Hollywood horror movie? Perhaps it's best to think of it this way. Under the sea, a new form of higher intelligence is taking shape. It isn't going to happen overnight. Hundreds of thousands of years will probably have to pass before the octopus's thinking powers can rival ours. Nature has all the time in the world. the next conquerors of the Earth won't have to come from outer space. So let's try to make friends with them. After all, they're already here. <laughs> 